My name is Rod Smith again. For those of you who have come today, I know we have some Tennessee Green Star partners uh, from Stanley Black and Decker that got up early from Jackson, so thank you, and uh, from Volkswagen that have come today. So for you all, please, please make sure you get in that treasure hunt raffle that 530 again will be given out thousand dollars can't believe it yeah trying to raise awareness to treasure hunts awareness to energy efficiency like bruce bremer was talking about so i hate being the man between you and lunch okay so i'm going to be quick but as a media person who left the real job in compressed air uh it's a long time ago now i have a sort of the honor to listen and learn and see what best practices are out there and what people are doing. And I also spend a lot of time thinking about what are things going to be like 20 years from now? I don't know why I do that. Uh, I probably won't be doing this 20 years from now, but uh, I hope I am. And, and one thing I've learned over the past five years, because a lot of the speakers on this panel and yesterday's panel actually asked me, they said, Rod, we have invested, we have learned a lot about compressed air, and we're ready to look at our other utilities. And so they were the ones that encouraged us to launch Chiller and Cooling Best Practices Magazine, Blower and Vacuum Best Practices Magazine, because they said, for compressed air, we can find experts, we can find resources that teach us how to use less. How to look at, you know, compressed air challenge cage, I have that constituents of demand word. I call it who's using it and how do we use less? And we struggle to find that for vacuum. We struggle to find that for cooling towers and how do we use less? So, so we just plunged in and, and started trying to learn about how can we use less. And we've learned a thing, a few things about synergies between these utilities because they are complicated and they have industries that support them with experts. And so I want to thank people that have come here that, that work with something besides compressed air because those are our roots, that's most of us. But I want to ask who in the audience has worked on blowers, cooling towers, vacuum, lighting, something that isn't compressed air, if you can raise a hand. Hey, that's awesome. And that's, that's my dream for this conference, that we have as much about cooling tower, as much about water treatment. We had a fascinating presentation this morning about moss. How about getting rid of chemicals in our plants for, for cooling towers? Um, so thank you for spending time on it. And I really believe that, and what I'm hearing from our key readers is there are incredible synergies. And I just have a few examples to throw out here, which probably won't you know, be anything new for you, but just to, see, to share some of the synergies that we see out there with, with these technologies. So you know, one slide I have here is, what do compressed air leaks have to do with cooling towers? This came from last year's uh, opening session where the, the speaker said that they went to a plant and said, look, we're leaking 30 to 40% of the compressed air. It'll be a, you know, a one year payback. It'll probably cost us 10 grand to do, yada, yada. They said, we're busy. We're just loaded. We're too busy to do it. So it turns out at that plant that compressed air is 50% of the cooling load. Okay. So these little leaks, we're, we're using 30% of the compressed air. Compressed air is 50% of the cooling load. And she found out later that year that they bought a half million dollar cooling tower. And she you know, was convinced that if they'd done that little compressed air leak project, they would not have had to buy a new cooling tower. So that blew me away. And I thought, OK, we've got to connect the dots. We have to connect the dots. We have to, if we do leak audits, start asking questions about cooling towers. How's your load? You know, Because we all face that challenge of another presentation. I started out with compressed air schmear. You know, we struggle with people caring. 
So lots of us knows that air compressors are actually great providers of heat. And air compressors can reduce boiler loads. And maybe 1% of them do, right? Do we got to, you know, here's a story we wrote about the New York City Transit Authority. They use their air compressors now to heat water for the showers at the bus depot. Completely takes care of it. So there were, there were, you know, basically it's kind of neat to think of three lubricated. Oh, we got backups. Thank you. Three normal lubricated rotary screw VSD air compressors are providing 20 gallons per minute of potable water at 110, 120 degrees F. Required an engineering firm that works with both systems to get involved. Okay. A catalyst was they're going to get stiff financial fines. That's what motivated it all if they didn't get more efficient in that New York City location. But compressed air people know that 96%, and you can argue if it's 94% or 93%, doesn't matter to me uh, who's right on that one. Uh, most of that heat generated in an air compressor is recoverable for heating air or process water. Okay, so I think of the future. And I'm always reminded we're still leaking compressed air everywhere. I'm not worried about that stuff. But hey, let's, let's keep pushing this. Let's keep pushing this opportunity of free heat. Oh, very nice. So an, another project I like, probably because I like craft brew and beers, is came from a craft brew alliance in Portland. And basically, a vacuum pump project reduces chilled water consumption significantly. OK, I, I also went to a plant north of here, if, a plastic extruder. The same project applies to all pa almost all plastic extruders, where they're using liquid ring vacuum pumps because it's a wet application. So we had a presentation yesterday from Solberg we, we've had presentations with case studies, but basically by using a, you know, a special separator, a special water trap, which can block the liquid from getting to the vacuum pump, you can go to a dry vacuum pump. Okay, it's hard to get the engineering hours from people because those aren't big pumps. People don't make a lot of money selling those pumps. We've got to raise awareness, though, and let end users know almost every craft brewer in the, in the country is a candidate for this. I would guess most plastic extruders are a candidate for this. They were able to go to dry vacuum pumps and at this firm, you know, able to reduce water consumption by 5,000 gallons per day. Reduce, reduce sewage treatment costs. It was just a great benefit from them and it also fit with their sustainability philosophy. Okay, so I guarantee you that the chiller guys don't walk in there and say, hey, have you considered switching from a liquid ring to a dry vacuum pump, right? I'm hoping in the future, and I'm, st I'm talking with them about it, and they're, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a journey, but I'm hoping we can go there, that they'll talk about constituents of demand someday. I think a lot of this community is the best prepared for that because you've already gone down that journey. So here's a job in Weirton, West Virginia. An air-cooled VSD air compressors reduce cooling water costs by a half million dollars. Basically, they were able to switch from water-cooled to air-cooled. And that's not an easy thing to do. We had a session yesterday about it. But let's challenge, let's challenge it and see what the benefits are. In this case, a new air-cooled VSD air compressor, dryers and tanks, gave benefits which included knocking out 500 grand a year in rental compressors and 135,000 in, in kilowatts. But the biggest benefit was cooling water. And we don't even have cooling water treatment numbers in here and chemicals. Okay, so that's a air-cooled, water-cooled dynamic. And that's not a, you know, you've got to be very careful with that, but let's, let's examine it. Same case study or same similar study, but basically a Wisconsin paper mill 
water cooled, these were older recips, going to air cooled, climate controlled compressor room, 548 million gallons per year. And for me, that's a staggering amount of water. Okay. Um, KW and maintenance costs 350,000. But these are big numbers. For me, the, the theme here is water cooled, air cooled on these slides. So Andy mentioned demand charges. A synergy that I see is just the knowledge and training that we've been getting with system assessments over the years, learning about demand charges, learning about storage. Uh, you know, a Green Star partner in Tennessee, I was invited out there to, to Denso in Maryville. And you know, they've implemented this really innovative ice storage technology, which uh, works together with the chillers so that they're not consuming energy for the HVAC during the day. They're creating ice at night, and then they're running the HVACs during the day using the ice. So these, these guys over here on the right, these are the ice storage tanks. Here are the chillers. And uh, you know, they, they actually improve the, the comfort of the workers, productivity of the workers using this concept of storage, which is not new to us in compressed air, obviously. The tire manufacturer, here's a fellow who's here today, and I'm not gonna embarrass him, but uh, he, uh, he gave us this photo, right? Compressed air storage, we know the benefits of those. We're not gonna get into that, but the synergy here is our knowledge, our training and system assessments in these different technologies. So I, a synergy here that I'm seeing, I was just at a, uh, this is a tire plant. If you see the screen behind them, these are zones that they've created where they're measuring KPIs for chilled water and compressed air. If it's a highly, highly measured instrumented facility, anytime a KPI is alarmed, like flow, meet, means a, a leak has sprung and maintenance is automatically deployed. A $500 by 500, well, I think it was a thousand pound bicycle with all the tools. It's really cool, actually. It's a big plant. Okay, so here's a synergy with IOT. Uh, I'm seeing this more and more. I was in Wisconsin last week or, or three weeks ago at our printer, Quad Graphics, every morning they have a chilled water team and a compressed air team that looks at screens like this and examines KPIs. It was really neat. I was proud that they're printing our magazine. So this synergy, this, this knowledge of using IoT, creating zones for your systems is, is providing big benefits and, and is a trend that, again, these are the, the best of the best, and, uh, but it's a trend where they're working together. Okay, and so what does IoT, what do computer screens need? They need measurement. And that's the number one thing that I answer when people ask me, what's the future? Is it these new incredible air compressors, air compressors, cooling towers, chillers? They're all gonna be getting better. The, the manufacturers are incredible about investing and making them better and better. But I really believe the future will be instrumentation. And so I ask, you know, people that are in the business, either in the manufacturing plant or, you know, my treasure hunt people, either in the manufacturing plant or in the community that proposes equipment, how good are you at instrumentation? Because this is where the knowledge comes. This is where the data comes from. You know, like Doug said, hey, you did an audit 10 years ago. Come on. Right. Uh, production processes are all instrumented completely. Products, everything is instrumented. They know everything happening with the production of their products. Uh, for me, I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that this knowledge will go to the back room where we've all lived, uh, where the air compressors, where the cooling towers, where the chillers, where the vacuum pumps are all in the back room, uh, uninstrumented. So. We have here at the Expo all kinds of instrumentation firms who I believe are doing a very smart thing of investing 
All the equipment has got the ability to absorb it, the air compressors, the blowers, the vacuum pumps, and communicate it. So that to me is instrumentation, is a huge future for this. And, and with that comes competencies, right? Are you comfortable? Because I've had conversations with people who are not comfortable and they, they frankly say, Rod, I'm not really, I don't really like that instrument stuff. I'd rather they just give us a call, okay? So I really believe this is the future. I see end users pushing it that are leaders in their industries. And, and uh, I think the synergies there are that instrumentation on the production side is going to come to the utilities in a big way. Don't ask me when, but it's already occurring. So that wraps me up. We're, we're ready to go upstairs. Here, announcement now for next year. Uh, we will be in Chicago next year at the Schaumburg Convention Center. That's a, a brand new facility. It's a beautiful facility. It's just a 12 minute drive from Chicago O'Hare. So very convenient to get to. It'll be September 21st, 23rd. And so we invite all of you to come and uh, thank you again for participating in this year's expo. Thank you.